Hello, my name is David Charles Rowan. I'm a master practitioner and trainer of neuro holistic therapy, a synthesis of NLP, hypnotherapy, and a field called psychobiology, which incorporates affective neuroscience and interpersonal neurobiology. And while I'd be the first to agree that following a video technique is not a substitute for individual personalized therapy, it can be useful. And while it might not heal the whole issue, something that can make a complex situation a challenging time, uh, an anxious anticipation become easier and bring a bit of relief to the day can have a merit and a value all of its own. And this technique is what we call sub-modality work. And it's very good at changing our relationship with something, whether that's a thing from the past, the present, or something we may be anticipating in the future. So first of all, I'd like you to select something that you'd like to feel differently towards. There may be many things. Just select one of them. Uh, you can do all the others one at a time once you've become familiar with the technique. But just for this moment, to illustrate the technique for you, just select one. That's right. And what I'd like you to do is just imagine that there's an invisible screen out in front of you. And you can project the image of the circumstance or event or person onto the screen. And first of all, I'd like you to notice, is the image moving or still? Is the image in colour or is it black and white? Is there any sound? And I want you to describe to yourself the emotion or mood you have looking at this right now. How do you feel? Oh, all right. Now, what I'd like to do now is just imagine that your mind has controls like a television set's remote control. So what I'd like you to do, first of all, if the image was moving, make it freeze frame. Perfectly still. And now, if it was in colour, just imagine you can turn all the colour all the way down. And that's right, drain all the colour out so it goes completely black and white. And if there's any sound, including the sound of your voice as you describe your feeling towards it. Now turn all the sound down, all the way down, until you hear it click silent. Now, now do something a little peculiar with the image. I want you to squash it into itself so it goes 2D. That's right. And put a square white frame around it. So it looks like a black and white photograph. In fact, give it a brown sepia tint so it looks like an old photograph. Nazareth. Now, I want you to play with its location and have it gently float 
further and smaller, smaller and further, further and smaller away. Now, so now it's far out there. Now, play with the gravity. Allow the image to gently float down and down to the floor. Down and down. Like a little feather sinking down on warm air. And follow it with your eye. So now you're looking at it out there, down there on the floor. And now you're looking at it this way, this tiny object far out down there on the floor. I want you to just notice, does it feel the same in this configuration? Or is it different? And if it's different, is that a better difference? Or a worse difference? To any degree. And if it's better, to any degree, what I'd like you to do now is very swiftly look to your right, look up at the ceiling, look at the back of your right hand, and the face front of the screen, and now imagine there's a piece of string on the end of your nose going far out into your future. I want you to see a version of yourself out there in the future, just a short time ahead. And how does that version of yourself respond if it were to encounter this person or circumstance or event? What would it be like? Now, bounce that out even further in time, further up ahead in the future, when you might encounter a similar circumstance or a similar event or a similar person. What would it be like? How would you feel? Notice how the world seems. What you'd tell yourself about being you here. Maybe even aware of the kind of things that the people say. Hmm. And if you find yourself experiencing change for the better, then I just want you to remember, because your unconscious already knows, everything in nature unfolds according to certain blueprints and patterns of design. And because your unconscious has presented you with this new, easier, more proficient and adaptable version of yourself in the future, that means this is the direction you're heading in. This is where you're going. And all you need to do to be that person is just allow your heart to beat and breathe in and out in sequence. Because that's the orientation of your pathway now. And you can do this kind of technique uh, on all sorts of things, things in the past, things in the present, anticipated things in the future, such that you can change and shuffle the furniture in the landscape of your psyche to make it more comfortable, to make it easier. This isn't a technique of dismissing things or of burying things or casting things into the wilderness of the unconscious. If you're consciously aware of all your memories, it's not that a memory has changed, it's that our relationship with it has changed. It's not that something we anticipate in the future is no longer there. Just that now we're able to hold that anticipation in a different way, and you can choose what you wish to adjust, what you wish to change, because this is a tool of self-mastery. And thank you for your time.